little, bit of, a little bit of a crown going on here, you see. Yeah. <laughs> the haircut and uh, uh, hasn't <laughs> behaved itself. Well, you know, considering the conversation we had uh, prior to the show yesterday, I should be thankful for what I have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, your host, uh, uh, host extraordinaire for the Amazing Skill Modelers Hangouts. Uh, this is the Sunday Hangout, and uh, I'm kind of waiting for the six inches of snow to fall on us overnight. Uh, and it started. <laughs> it's uh, March 3rd, and I don't get it. It's not supposed to do this, but I guess it did this year. Anyway, uh, I'd like to say that I've also ordered the new shop cards. And uh, that's going to be the same one, but the bottom part, uh, Google Plus has been dropped. And so that part of it is changed and the color is a little more vibrant. So if you want a shop card, this is a shop card, basically a postcard. This oh, is free. Nice. This is free. You send me your snail mail to my email. And at no cost to you, I will mail you one. And my email is scratching jack models at gmail.com. Scratching jack models at gmail.com. Uh, what else? Uh, there is something else I'm getting. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, as they say, but I think you guys <laughs> like this. Uh, something to um, show your pride in your community. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, also, uh, I should write these things down because I've got a cast iron steel sieve of a memory. So <laughs> leak out the sides. Yeah, I'm always wiping my ears. And uh, yesterday we had a great, 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 uh, a great uh, conversation with uh, Ralph about uh, the uh, tenant controls. Uh, he owns and runs tenant controls. Got an insight into his business, and it just confirms everything I suspected in you, that he is a really nice guy. He's really cool, and he is very much uh, customer-oriented. Uh, so tenantcontrols.com is where you would find his wares to light and make your lights blink and flash and rotate and all kinds of fun stuff uh, for your models. Uh, and he's got a, you know he's got a car electronic board. And he's got one thing or maybe two things for model railroading, but the majority has been sci-fi. <laughs> so, uh, but it was interesting to hear him about his business, how the business started, how the business carries on. So take a look at yesterday's, that's March uh, 2nd, uh, Across the Pond Hangout. And tonight, I think we're going to share some builds, uh, share some things that we've been doing our benches since we didn't have a opportunity yesterday to do that. Because after all, it's all about you guys and what you built. We'll look at the communities, both MeWe.com and Facebook.com. I almost felt compelled to say that. And everybody knows that. Um, and tell you, I'll uh, show you what the uh, current community covers are, because that's a, of importance too. Uh, to you know, kind of recognize those who have done something on their workbenches that merit everyone in a community to appreciate. Uh, today we have our, our usual suspects <clears throat> that I will introduce. Sorry, Stephen, you're the last one. So I'm going to start with my Google left to right. With <laughs> hey, guys. Well, I always save the best for last, Stephen. So that's just a good <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's like <laughs> uh, eat the green m &Ms. you got to eat the green M&Ms last. You know? that, that'd make a change for me. I'm normally last because, you know, R comes out. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the last one to join the group. Well, yeah, yeah. Randall doesn't know how to act anymore. And on our, our live uh, chat, uh, George is around. And George, uh, I'm going to delete that comment. <laughs> you are too good. Anyway, how you doing, Buck? Oh, good, except for being 50 below again. Again? Wow. Just. Oh, man. You wow. Know, Why is that 60 day. below? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, we had one day it got to 19 degrees and it was shorts weather. Time to barbecue again. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think we're finally going to get going towards the warm up, but you couldn't tell from my job, man. I've just been ramped up and getting ready for spring, bringing out lawnmowers. And yeah. 
patio sets and yeah retail oh. winters don't exist anymore no. oh my god <laughs> i still got i still got six feet of snow on the ground but you know we got you got, got bathing suits and shorts yeah yeah <laughs> uh, with that you know with my job i haven't gotten much done this last probably three weeks and i mean it's still going to keep going up until probably mid-june um It'll settle down. We'll get into the craziness of just spring, but the resets are almost done. But I have gotten some work done on my Hornet. That looks like a boat, not an insect. <laughs> so I uh, I did a, a thing on my YouTube channel, and I asked uh, you know all the subscribers to to uh, cast their vote on whether they wanted me to build the Hornet, the Sherman tank, or um, a B-17 because I was waiting to get some stuff for another sci-fi build. So everybody wanted to see me build a ship because I've never built a ship before. So mm -hmm. here we are. So, so you just decided to go down to the corner of your yard and beat the hornet's nest. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so far, it's pretty interesting little kid. I'll tell you one thing. My uh, magnifiers and my tweezers are getting a workout from all the wee bitty parts <laughs> to go into these things. So. But Speaking that's of a, our you got young eyes, you can handle it. That's an art form. You have to learn to do everything through a magnifier. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of our good friend Ralph, I did get this nice little toy in. Ah. Uh, Anybody guess what that's going to go to? Oh, uh, look at that. Ralph gave you that. Night 1000. Well, I, I bought it, but yeah. Um, no. Getting work prepared on. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Yeah. nice. So, you got a. His, I really do enjoy using Ralph's product. I've used it in my Voyager build, my Enterprise build. So, really looking forward to putting it in the Raider. Um, definitely got to do some modifications on the kit for the board just to, to fit up in the helmet. Um, and then definitely got to do some modifications on the kit just to get the parts to fit together. Right. You know, you know, uh, if it doesn't work, you can always play horseshoes with it. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do. You know, I've never really had an issue with the Mobius Vipers, but this Raider, um, the undersides of the wings, I've actually had to go clip the pins off because they just they didn't match up. Yeah. So, but uh, once I get this all done, I'm going to take. My Vipers that I've gotten built, I'm going to take them off their stands and I'm going to actually build a whole board with the, the two Vipers, the Mark II and the Mark Seven, going after this Raider. And I just got to figure out how to do the gun effects from both ships because I want them firing at each other. So I got to figure out how to do that. But I got something thing. for you about those pins. The, pin, okay. the receptacles that the pins go in, all right, depending how thick that wall is for that hole. Uh, for okay. In X01, the top half and the bottom half, I yep. drilled out the receptacle so that when the pin went in, it had a little give. Okay. Uh, so I didn't do it to them all. I should have, should have, could have. But for the top and bottom half, I did that. Now, again, it all depends on um, the, you know, you can probably make the pins a little shorter. They don't have to go all the way in. But uh, opening up that hole so you have a little bit of give could be the difference between fitting and unfitting. Yeah, I'll do that because, like I said, this, I mean, this the front part fits very well together. Yeah. It's it's, it's this right here. It's oh. Just oh. Right there. Yeah, drill out the receptacle. Okay. You can I will. Shorter. I definitely will. So. Other than that, guys, it's uh, still very, very cold in North Dakota. They keep promising warm weather, but I think uh, they, they just like to lie to us. So. Well, you know what? I think it would be warmer if you dropped the north. <laughs> well, you know, our good friend Jim's up there, so, you know. <laughs> I told you this already years ago. Uh, north Dakota was considering changing their name to just plain Dakota. Yeah. The north sounded too cold. They thought that was Canada. Well, it's mm -hmm. it is now. The weather. <laughs> uh, speaking of Canadians, how you doing there, Jim? Oh, I'm doing fine. 
working a bit more on my lifeboat uh, today. Started putting that walnut plank across the top. Mm. Hey, there's a boat under those clamps? Hmm? There's, there's a boat, a boat under these clamps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's building that for his rubber duckies. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow. So, it's coming along. Boy, that's a that's a hefty little a, clamp there. Yeah, it's a ferris. What's what? One, two, three. No, no, I mean what you're holding. Oh, oh my yeah. uh, my little uh, pan vice clamp? Yeah. Yeah. Hey hey Jim, did yeah. the walk calling off the stock yet for you? Because I know how much we charge for those little clamps. <laughs> you just call and say, "Hey, we got stock for you, man. You just keep using our product." And we'll... Well, I got a, I got a dozen of them. So I mean, that's. A, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> when I started this project, I only had five, and I ran out of. I couldn't use my binder clips anymore, so I had to go out and buy seven more. Ah. Yeah. So you know what that set me back anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Because I've been looking to buy them, and I'm just like, yeah, I ain't pulled the trigger yet. But at least with the DeWalt ones, they come two in a pack. True. Very true. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> so, wow. I, I, I like that that that, that border. It, that looks awesome up there, man. Oh, oh yeah, with the walnut up the top? Yeah. yeah. Is that actual walnut? It's actual walnut, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's actual walnut. Semi precious wood. It's harder to shape. Oh, sure, because it's a harder pick, wood. It's a harder wood than the 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 beech wood, and uh, so yeah. The only other thing you got going is for a future project, and hopefully, I get the decals in tomorrow. Mm. That's supposed to saying, but we'll see. Is my Ooh. Panzer D for my destroyer project, mm -hmm. which I think I've told most of you about already. About so, what that project's about. So, my little piece of Canadian history to go in with that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the problem that uh, you may be having there. Uh, Buck, uh, Heath is having the opposite problem. He just uh, he's on our live chat and he's just waiting for milder weather to continue. Uh, one of his builds. It's too hot down there in Australia. How we feel? <laughs> you know? oh, weather doesn't get anywhere near freezing, and it's, it's it gets it's cold. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Australians talk about milder weather, but in their case, it means cooler. Cooler, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll give you. The I'll give you the 50 below, man. Oh, yeah. We'll ship that down to you anytime. Yep. Yep. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's free postage, too. You don't have yeah. to <laughs> uh, Tony McCash is joining us on the live feed, too, as well as George. And Heath was, of course, saying John Paul is there as well. Uh, and uh, Tony says about the um, the part that, that you're talking about, Buck, he had to do uh, some putty some putty on that yeah uh, and in fact he didn't say some he said a lot <laughs> yeah like i said mobius does really good it's just I, I was really shocked when i was putting these wings just test fitting them together how how off they are yeah yeah uh this is uh the uh cover the yamato is the cover for the facebook page uh Building. You've got to guess. Guess. Guess why I picked this one. Just guess. <laughs> crickets. I'm uh, hearing crickets, and it's the middle of the river. It's breaking the water. It's coming up oh, from the water. Yeah. It's like the coolest thing. Yeah. Uh, there are other pictures, but this one uh, seemed to uh, be the most fitting for the cover because it's a horizontal picture. So... <laughs> um, Fits the space better. Yeah. This was. Uh, oh gosh, I gotta say, I love it. This. I love that. Uh, this was. Oh gosh, look at all the people, you know, showing off their wares. Here it is. That would have been John Hunt. 
He's also a MeWe member too. Uh, John Hunt uh, did this. Hey, Jack, scroll back up. Randall's got to see that you can actually do this. Um, Keep going up to the fucker. Oh, watch your language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Foker. Foker cry. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Yellow, Randall. Yellow. You know, yeah. <laughs> Favorite color. Actually, it's actually. When I started scrolling past there, I thought someone's going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Buck, you didn't let me down. Nope, never will, brother. Never will. <laughs> uh, you know what uh, Randall said when he first saw that? He said, "Damn that Foker, reminding me." <laughs> <laughs> All right, how you doing there? Uh, Jay, are you feeling any better? I am doing significantly better. Good to hear. I was, uh, I spent a couple of weeks uh, as a guest in the hospital watching heart monitors go beep and getting pumped full of some really, really, really good drugs. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm doing a whole lot better than, than I was and, and hopefully... I'm in, the, I'm in the process of getting back to where I was on 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 projects. I'm getting things uh, sent out on just 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 all kinds of things. Everything kind of got everything just kind of went to hell in a handbasket for a while, but uh, they are getting better. I have been building props more than mo more than model kits right now. I'm making. Uh, Making props. I'm building tricorders actually. Um, so I've got several here that are in process. The I've got a, a Mark VI, which is the very first kind that they used. I don't have one that I can bring over and show you, but that had uh, a little removable hand scanner that. Uh, I am. I'm making it so that you can, when you when you press it, it lights up and and flashes is removable, and the tricorder itself will have all the lights and sound. Uh, one that is quite a ways into work is the Mark Seven, which is the one most people are probably most familiar with. As yeah. You can see the. Uh, I can't turn off. There we go. Got the holes cut out for all of the. Parts I've got, I've got all the, uh, all the, I have the exact same old flat LEDs that they used on the original props that I'm going to be putting in. Um, and comparing this, I also have one of the Playmates toy uh, Mark Seven tricorders that I am modifying the shape of. But as you see, the two of them together, the Playmates toy is pretty darn close, but it's a little bit smaller. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, this when when you open it, it will make the ratcheting sound and have all of the lights going. And uh, I haven't decided exactly what I want to put on the screen yet. I I am strongly leaning towards getting an actual TTL screen in there that I can put move, different graphics on. And I'm adding buttons so that you'll be able to press the buttons and make it make different beep 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 sounds and all that other good stuff. I have the top part of a Mark 9 or my Mark 10 tricorder, just depending on what it does. It was the, the actual shape of the tricorder is no different. This is just the top shell, but uh, it's kind of an upgrade to the Mark 7 that they had. And I, I'm building all of these on my own, either out of fiberglass or out of resin. And this again will have, all of these will be lighted and sound and everything. They'll also have a mute switch so the sound can be turned off so that if a person wanted to use it on video, they can have the lights going but no sound so they could pull in the sound later. Uh, and I've got a mark, I think it's a mark 15. It was used in uh, the Voyager episode Endgame. 
it's a futuristic like 30 years in the future oops 30 years in the future type tricorder it uh i don't have any hinges right. on this one right now nice but, very cool but this oh, is nice. the, the 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 thing about this one that i like is that um this can be made into a medical tricorder by drilling into the side here and putting on this little arm that extends out and I I scratch built I can't find I scratch built the arm that sticks out this is the mold for the arm nice but uh, that has a little green LED and and uh, all that good stuff and if there's any Logan's Run fans out there oh I love the show I am building a uh, what they call a follower it's also also known as the tracker i'm building these these will have sound uh there will be a, a ttl screen up here that will change to whatever graphics you want really it'll have not moving graphics but it'll have like faces of uh runners and different messages that'll come through buttons on the side here uh this part up here i took some uh what do I, do? I started with some very dense wood, made the shape the way I wanted it to be, and then I took that and then I covered it with uh, epoxy and sanded and smoothed the crap out of it so that I could end up with a mold that was really smooth. Oh, right. And this is a this is a test pole. It's not what I uh, it's not what I'd actually use, but it fits in it fits in the top here. And when you press the top button. It, it's a flashlight and there's a button that goes across the middle here that when you press one side it'll do one thing one side it'll do the other thing and then there's another button down here that basically you know will activate something else and these are made out of fiberglass I have a mold I need a mold and then uh, have been hand hand making these in fiberglass so I've been a busy little beaver. Mm. <laughs> while in the hospital, that's that's everything you've done while you were laying in bed. You're absolutely amazing. I, I yeah 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 yeah. I just no, I I've been I've been working. I was working on some of that before, and then I. Uh, I, I, got, I hate to see what you can accomplish when you're all uh, conscious and stuff, and not on drugs. Well, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, it's it's like that story I told before when the first time they put me on on nitroglycerin, it gave me the single worst headache I have ever had in my entire life. I mean, it was just agony. Yeah. And I called a nurse and said, Is there anything that can be done about this headache? Because I can't I can hardly move. If I turned my head like that, it felt like somebody, you know, hit me with a sledgehammer. So she said she'd check with the doctor, and she came back and asked me what could be the stupidest question anyone has ever asked anyone. She said, yeah, the doctor said I can give you some painkiller. Uh, would you like Tylenol or morphine? <laughs> <laughs> I thought perhaps she'd say, uh, you said you have a headache. Where does it hurt? Yeah, well... <laughs> When given the choice between Tylenol and morphine, you always choose morphine. Right. Always choose morphine <laughs> when given the choice, right? Yeah. So, but that's that's I've been I've been you know putting in 12, 14 hours a day down here trying to get some things together that I can put up for sale. I've got an Etsy store that nice. is, I just started, um, but I want to put this stuff up and keep doing it until I get a cease and desist letter from CBS. Uh, so you know that's just that's just what i've been working i'm trying to make some tricorder props that are more than just flashing lights with sound i want them to to have to, to i want them to feel like you're picking up a real tricorder mm -hmm. so and get those out these will not be kits these are these are going to be completed props mm -hmm. so Man, you know, I'd like to help you out. Uh, can you tell me and others how to get a T-shirt like that? How to get a T-shirt like this one? Yeah, the Evil Duck um, T-shirt. Well, I've got to modify the original thing because the address on the very bottom is wrong, but uh, I am... 
basically basically what it'll boil down to when i redo it is uh you know send me a t-shirt i'll put the logo on there or tell me what size you wear and uh i'll find out how much they cost because you know i'll do it for the price of the for the price of the t-shirt i'll be happy to do it oh nice uh well okay yeah this, Let me know. this is this is the evil duck logo that was designed by tony mccash for me yeah and i absolutely love it i i, I uh in fact, I, I performed a wedding earlier today wearing this. Seriously. So. I, I love the fangs on that duck. The fangs. Yeah, I do too. I do too. <laughs> no, but oh, like I said, you put some of those up on your Etsy store. I'm sure you would sell some. Just I, might, I might try that. I could. I, I also um, have been starting to work with carbon fiber. Uh -oh. I've done a lot of work with fiberglass. Uh -huh. and working with carbon fiber is very similar. Um, one example is on my on my uh, vaporizer mod. I use it so much the paint wore off and it looks ugly and everything. So I decided to wrap it with carbon fiber. Nice. And uh, I, I did that and it, it worked out real nice. It's not a perfect job, but it's a good job. And and so uh, that's what I've been up to, Jack. Okay. How are uh, you? <laughs> well, I want to talk about uh, your brother from another mother. Uh, oh, good. Uh, I missed Heath. Uh, For all of you who have forgotten what Heath looks like, here he is. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, guess where I am? And it turns out he's at a motor racing uh, event. Uh, uh, near where he lives, down in Australia. Gosh, look at how green those trees are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just wanting, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So that's Heath. And uh, moving on, how you doing there, Randall? Not too bad. Not too bad. <clears throat> just uh, making some more progress with Discovery here. Ooh, uh, yeah. Nice. Beautiful. I'm so glad you got one of those because I knew you were wanting one, but weren't sure you were going to be able to get it. Yeah, well, it um, it was it was a result of um, more than more than one whiskey and uh, <laughs> ten percent off sale with uh, Cult TV Man and uh, oh yeah and computer access. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, <laughs> the ten percent made all the difference, you know. Especially. Yeah, I gotta finish mine. I'm about half done with it. <laughs> You're further along than I am, and I've had it since it came out. <laughs> yep, and uh, I'm finally starting to glue on, you know, the the back end of it here. So uh, beautiful. Look at the detail. So, what's the material used in that? Uh, polystyrene plastic. Uh, the paint. Uh, wow. kind of like just various shades of gray, all okay. black and a rattle can, and lots of masking. Nice job. Yeah, he's going to poke a hole in the wall so he can fit it into his room once it's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's the front end, and also wow. this is the back end. Wow. He's doing a bang up job, and he's doing a quick, a quick, uh, quick study of it too. Uh, this is one of your faster <laughs> builds, actually. Yeah, it's been pro progressing quite well for like yeah, for oh, me. Wow, anyway. look at the detail. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love the detail in there. Yeah, his painting details are always very good. He's he's very uh, he's very very good on his paint. No, that'll be I, I can probably three D model that stuff in there fairly quickly. <laughs> <laughs> just saying <laughs> the uh, bit that has been really slowing me down though are uh, these oh, the oh, oh yeah. yeah 60 of them all together wow <laughs> 60 Man, of them you've been busy 60 of them, and each one is five pieces, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they um, five pieces each. 
Mm -hmm. 60 of oh excuse me 60 of them all together so 300 pieces wow to, uh, to clean up and glue together <laughs> before you even think of painting them <laughs> and they range from uh, there's that's the medium size then there's uh, i'm admiring the work ethic here <laughs> <laughs> and there's more <laughs> Well, you know, Stephen, they say the uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same result. A, yeah. a lot of insanity going on here. <laughs> I mean, lots of toothpicks. <laughs> it looks like, some, it looks like something you can eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and don't, don't uh, forget which is which. I, I labeled them on the bottom of the polystyrene so that uh, so I wouldn't accidentally paint over the letters. <laughs> oh, my God. That's yeah. pretty good. That's hilarious. Oh, um, there's more. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, <that's> great. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, Stephen. He uses uh, rattle cans uh, pretty much exclusively. <laughs> yep. Wow. I'm a stranger to the airbrush. <laughs> oh my gosh! Actually, you like you can almost say I'm a complete virgin as far as the airbrush is concerned. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Heath has a, an airbrush. Uh, uh, you you don't. Well, I think you're the only holdout that I know. Yeah. So what do you? So you using a paintbrush? Just a regular brush? Uh, no, no. Uh, where did I put them? Paintbrush and spray cans. And spray cans, really? Yeah, rattle cans. Yeah, yeah, rattle cans. Seriously. Yep. Yep. So why why are you not why are you not using an airbrush? It'd be but it would be a lot more efficient. <laughs> it probably would be, but the rattle cans are quicker. <laughs> and you don't need to clean up uh, the air, uh, the can like the can brush. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think you have, I think you have a little bad boy in there. You gotta use those spray cans. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. That that may that may uh, I like to amuse my neighbors by watching me being chased around the garden by clouds of spray paint. <laughs> is is See, that it? No matter which way I point the can out there, it comes straight back at me. So it's sort of like squirt. <laughs> like barbecuing, doesn't matter where you stand, the smoke's gonna go right at you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> smoke smoke magnet. <laughs> well oh uh one more thanks, thanks to some uh, generosity on, on liam's part when i was at his, his house uh last weekend he uh he gave me this oh sweet Ooh. so i'm kind of moving into your territory here jay and the, on the props yeah that's well, mine, will not be anywhere, mine will not be anywhere near as sophisticated as yours. You'd probably take that and uh, put an actual TV screen in it and then get yeah. it to actually work. Yeah. You know that, uh, you know that uh, Stephen, what that is? Space 1999. Yeah, it's a communicator. Yeah. yeah. Communicator from Space 1999. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's communicator. I like their face. I like their weapons. Their face. Yeah, the, 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 the mm. laser pistol. Those are cool. Yep. Comes with. Uh, yeah. Said, if, if, if anyone watched, anyone watched the. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> talking about the pistols. If anybody watched that trailer for the 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 new show, you will see a reference to those in the show. Cool. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that yet. And. It comes in uh, three fairly large mm. chunks of of, uh, of resin. It all goes together, kind of like that. I know that some people actually take these things and uh, hollow hollow them out and actually put even uh, an actual uh, like what size is that? But Two inch, but a, but a two inch square screen, yeah. And yeah. they, but um, 
that's way beyond me. I'd, I'd be happy enough just getting it painted and getting the paint to stay on the resin. <laughs> I've, got, I've already scrubbed it to within an inch of its life in soapy water twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so thick, though. The, that, that resin is so thick that it's going to it's gonna sweat oil for a while. Yeah. There's really not much you can do about that other than scrub it and paint it and hope for the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I've been up to. Wow. Oh, okay. This is uh, the MeWe community. Uh, community cover. Uh, God, I think I did such a good job in centering that just where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for the work itself. Uh, that work goes to uh, Bravo Tank. First mini in 2019 trying to break old habit and learning new technique like blending NMM -M and freehand. Don't know what NMM -M is, but it looks good, whatever it is. Uh, looks as if success was achieved and becomes a community cover. Bravo, bravo, tank. <laughs> uh, this is actually really cool. I like the paint on this. How you doing, Stephen? I'm doing fantastic. I'm, uh, um, okay, so you want to share? Share something. I'm going to share something, but I'm going to need to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Give me a hot second. Um, um, just side detail, side detail. Um, give me a hot moment. Okay. Um, all right. Let me go back to. All right. Uh, let me go back to share here. I think this share screen. I'm going to share that screen. I guess I've got to double click on it, right? Um, you're sharing, Stephen. Yeah, it's almost there. There it is. Yeah. All right. So I'm sharing now? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. All right. You see the. Okay, cool. All right. Very, very, very good. All right. So. All right. So I tell you what, I'm going to um, share some projects that I've actually done for the community. Um, so these were paid pro projects. Um, so this one was the some actually this one was 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 um, commissioned by Courtney Wayne, and Courtney wanted me to do kind of like a um, an intermediary an intermediary transition between the the original Constitution class Starship and the refit. So this particular piece will actually fit on your 1350th scale enterprise. And um, so what, what, what you would do is you would cut out the first ring on your, on, your, on your enterprise and then mm -hmm. replace it with this particular piece. So what I did was I designed it so that you have the ability to put lights inside right. and designed it so that if you want to put a bridge in there you had some space to do so um so this is this is kind of a, a, a pretty fun one all right so i've got a, a few more to share with you and then and, and go ahead and ask questions whatever you want it's just kind of um so that's one of them so let me bring up my There we go. All right. So another oh, wrong one. Is that my lunar module? Ah uh, yes, you're doing a lunar module. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool to see. Should be this one. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh nice. my. Wow. Well. All right. And it is currently printing out right now. No kidding. So I've got well, I did an initial print. Um, I wasn't totally happy with the initial print, so I redid another one. That's what that's what I'm printing out now. So I'll show you I'll show you the initial print um, after I after I get done screen sharing. Um, but this one is actually I forgot to put the uh, the rockets in here. Uh, there we go. 
So there's rockets so all included, and they have the booster rockets here. And this 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 actually um, is, is, is split up between the top and the bottom half. Mm -hmm. So they both separate. Mm. Cool. Okay. So they both separate. So if I come over, actually, let me do this. Let me break. Let me let me break it down in layers, and share with you what I what what I've been doing with this one. Um, this is the base. So I'm organizing this in such a way that I can easily three D three D print these out. So this is one piece we print. We've got the legs. So take a look at the legs. I organized the legs so that they're actually in panels. And mm -hmm. what you do is I will lay the panels flat down on the on the print bed, and it yep. will print these perfectly without any supports. Cool. So I just kind of strategized that there. Um, all right. So we got the the base is connected to it. I bullioned it out so I can easily just glue these inside there. Then I and the rivets are all separate. I had to design every I, I I created the rivets in separate layers and placed them onto the model. That was the tedious part. Yeah. Was was uh, doing the rivets. Um. All right. So if I go to not leg, but if I add on, where's the feet? There's the feet. There are the feet. Right down here. So that's all, and the feet I just finished three D printing. Um, so let's attach on to here the rocket. Well, that's for the that's, that's for the upper half of the ship actually. Mm. Okay, so about I'll, I'll show you the upper half first. Let's go to the go to the um, the body. Oops, there she is. So there's the body. And inside there, if I if I if I turn on the rocket, you can see it inside there. It, it's it'll be connected to the body um, of the ship. And if we go to the section where where the crew is going to be, I call that one the face. So each one of those is separate. <laughs> they're separate individual sections that I three D print out, um, you know, individually. Now we've got uh, the antenna. We're getting close. There. Hmm. The rendezvous radar. Is that what that's called? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Rendezvous, rendezvous radar. So I'm, I'm going. I'm going to just put that in the background here. Switch to two. I want to move the antenna forward a little bit. Um. All right, so I'm gonna move this forward a little bit so I so that's so it's placed correctly. There we go. All right, and let's bring it back. And there we go. There we go. So, so yeah, so that was that was a fun one. So this one was, was actually created for the San Diego Comic Fest that's happening this week. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to go on top of a cake, um, and I'll and I'll show you I'll show you, I'll show you the actual printed pieces when we're, when I'm done screen sharing. Okay. Um, so actually, what I'm printing now I'm printing now is the the base and then also the body, which won't be done until about nine or ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. So it's a, it's, it's it's a twenty two hour print. No, we'll wait. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you will wait. I don't you know if Google will like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me share something else with you about I'm now I'm doing let's see. Ooh, here's what you'll like. All right. Here's one you like. Oh. Oh a torpedo tube. Yeah, a new one. New I, one. I, 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 it, my, my newest commission. And this is by a guy who's building, I think it's like a four feet long, a four foot long crayon bird of prey. That's studio size. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's still your stuff. So he wanted me to design the tube. Now watch, check this out. See this in here? Mm -hmm. Each one of those compartments, each this this one individual compartment will 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 um will um house one LED light. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So every so you got ten compartments of LED lights within three separate sections. Oh. That's what, yeah, and, well, that's that's pretty that's gonna burn pretty hot in the sense of a lot of light. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, okay, but but if that's right, the ball that's that's correct. So so what he's what what he's going to do is he's gonna design it so that as the um as the torpedo tube is charging up, it's gonna look like this first ring charges up, brights up. The second ring charges up. The third ring charges up. Yeah, and then it all starts flashing with the light in the center right here. All right. If we go inside, there's all types of wonderful juicy detail. Yeah. <laughs> light yeah, won't, uh, yeah, detail. Yeah. Heat, heat won't be a problem on that because the lights won't be on as uh, that long. Not That's heat right. as in temperature. Heat as in lots and lots of light. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. yeah, gonna be bright. That's cool. Very yeah. bright. This 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 is gonna be cool. So, um, so on this particular piece, um, he hired me to design it, but he wanted to print it out. So I'm gonna assume that he's gonna be printing out with probably a much more durable um, substrate of some yeah. sort. Yeah. So, but I wanted to give as much detail, not not so. And that so far, the client absolutely loves this. No kidding. That's so, handy. That's not too low. <laughs> yeah, so so he's going to um he's sending me the head of the bird of prey so that I can match it up more accurately. Which is when I which is when things work the best is when the client sends me the actual model piece to work with and then I've got a visual reference there and I can match them exactly. Yeah. So that was a fun one. Okay, let me share with you another. Um, let's see. Final base. Let's see. What is this? Oh, let's do, let me go back up here. Oh, okay. So I'm doing, I guess I'll show you this one. Stage oh, yeah. one, stage two, stage, I started there. Let me go. There we go. All right. So, um, I was also hired to design, redesign a, a a kind of a fan concept of the of the Klingon warp nacelle. So this is in this is this one this one is work in progress. It's no it's nowhere near finished. I'm I'm, I'm still I'm still kind of adding on details. So here, let me kind of go go to. I'm I'm still playing around with details here. Okay, it's a work in progress. So what's going to happen is that this darker gray area is going to be cut out. A grill, yes. Right, and then I'm going to add in the other details so that so that, so that you're going to light it from behind. Yes. And 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 you get the green glow coming through. Yes. But also in addition, I'll go ahead and highlight this real quick. These areas here. Now, what you're looking at is half of it, right? right. So these these areas here, um, it's going to also light up as well with the green. I'm going to kind of got kind of simulate it, right? So these so these areas here will also light up. So right, right now, I'm kind of working on where I want to go with this design wise. And what this in this particular piece is going to fit onto your um, your one three fifty scale Patiga class crayon um, kit. So I will end up you know cutting out the details on the side where all you have to do is just take this nacelle and replace the other replace it with the other ones or replace the other nacelles with this one. It'll yeah, fit right on there. So when I'm done, I'm going to have all types of details back here. All types of nice juicy um um and um mm -hmm. 
textures all through the piece. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna look kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, hey, how long did it take you to get to that point right here? That one, not that long. Um, probably <laughs> here, maybe an hour or, or two at the most. It's yeah. kind of because because I didn't really draw it out. I just I just kind of I just kind of put stuff in there, throw it together, and see how how I liked it, and just played around with it. Uh -huh. Um, this 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 is not a lot of work. This is this very little work, maybe about an hour or so. Um, Just makes you want to punch him in the throat, doesn't it, Jack? Because <laughs> 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 I'm mean, looking at that and thinking, my with my learning curve, that represents a month's worth of work. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, maybe. I assume I, 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 that will oh. probably be correct. <laughs> oh, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, then yeah, maybe, maybe better. <laughs> yeah, three, uh, 3D printing is uh, something I absolutely love and have absolutely no experience in. Yeah, well, 3D, no. 3D printing is the least of your worries. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the most of your worries is learning how to create, do 3D in, in Scratch for, for, yeah. for a professional package. That's Creating the, the object, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's printable. Right, what learning to print is is a it's it's a pain, it's it's a it's a curve, but nowhere near as what you have to learn and, and custom creating your stuff. Mm. Yeah, because I've I've considered getting a three D printer for a long time, and I, I just kind of keep going. Yeah, but that's going to require a lot of sitting down and learning things, and do yeah. I have the patience to do that right now? Right. Oh, I don't. So forget it. I'll do something else. Right. And, uh, that, but but I think eventually I'm going to because it's just it's it's you know it's too cool and it, it can do too much that that uh, would take me forever by building by scratch so right you know right and then I've got um, let's see well you know what I'll share uh, Wayne Bridge okay I'll, I I just do this on there just for fun this is when I was uh oh come on. There we go. Oh, <laughs> George says learning curve, more like learning shank in my case. <laughs> <laughs> and this was just kind of a fun one I was playing around with. Is I was I was just you know just just for the fun of it. Yeah. Just to, you know bring my childhood dreams. And of course you can see I, I stuck with the original warp the cell concept as opposed to placing on the next one I'm going I'm going to put on my actual customized warp nacelles um onto this one um but uh yeah it's fun it's fun stuff just so what i'll do is um i'll i will stop sharing my screen and uh, let's see and then i'll show you live on, on some of the 3d printed stuff and i believe um i gotta figure out how to stop sharing you're not sharing right now. Yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. All right, all right, all right. So then you've got me. So I'll show you. So I, 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 I was talking about the um, um, the face of the Apollo eleven a landing module. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. that is amazing. Just take there. my money, Stephen. What was that? Just take my money. Okay, oh, no problem. <laughs> I can I can do that. <laughs> Carwin, if you're watching, Carwin, uh, yeah. like the good news that there's enough of us to do CG that if you had a printer, others could build the model for you. For look you. At the, look oh. at the detail on the inner hatch door, the outer oh. hatch door right there. Look this is that. the extruded one. This is the extruded 3D printing. This isn't the other one, right? Yeah, the, 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 that's right. This is the um the the FDM. This is FDM. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm using the filament. Filament, right? Yeah. That's uh, right. If you hold that up again and and real close, you can see. Yeah, you can see the lines on it. But boy, the rivets are showing up. Yeah. Well, what um? No, no. Trust me. Any detail you model in your 3D program, it will show up accurately with your FDM printer. The FDM printers are excellent. It's just that the big difference is that the FD, FDM, it, it lays things down in layers. And that's yeah. where you get the, the banding from. But if you go with the SLA printers, 
which is a resin based printer um you know you're not going to see as much banding or or very little or no bounding banding but with sometimes that. the detail on the uh, i've been noticing lately uh, right the sls's are a little soft that's right that's exactly right the details on the sla are soft the details on the filament printer it's edgy 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 i mean you get you can get things sharp like a knife or yeah. you can get things blunt as as much as you want, and it, it is accurate about it. Now here is um, the other end. Oh yeah, wow. mm -hmm. I've heard that. I've heard that the uh, resin printers also just smell horrible. Right, it's not. It's not really good for your health. Where yeah. PLA, PLA, what, what what is that made from? It's made from corn oil. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not it's not detrimental to your health. No, like this, mm -hmm. like the other stuff. So the head, the face of it will be glued on, like this. Mm -hmm. And I designed it that way so I can print them flat on the printer, like yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's ideal. With, 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 yeah, good. exactly. With 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 no supports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. here is. Oh, wow. I take one of these off. There's the leg. <laughs> I, I printed it like that. Yep. Right? As long as your overhang is less than 70 degrees, you're fine. Yeah. That's right. Overhang is less than 70. 70. I was stressed out as to how I was going to do this one. So when, yeah. I built, when I built it, it's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. I can do this. <laughs> and then I can be the print with no problems. And wow. the is so good. Wow. And that's going on a cake. Right, this going on a cake. So this connects into here. The feet will go here, right? And then it'll sit on the cake. So you can look at my size of my hand. It's Dude. pretty big. That's a good size model. Near 132 scale? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what scale it is. I just know it took yeah. 22 hours to print this one piece. <laughs> 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 So, so then um, this. Let's see. So it's just that um, the old monogram Ravel kit of the command and service module is, yeah. is in thirty-two scale, and it is crying out for a thirty-two scale lunar module to attach to. I'm surprised yeah. Ravel didn't come out with something, being that the this July is the fifty anniversary. Fiftieth anniversary. Yeah, they yeah. missed right. Out. Well, the, the kit companies are just rehashing. Huh? The kit, the kit oh, wow. companies are just rehashing all their old kits. Yeah, the right. one thing I heard is Ravel was bringing out the big Saturn V. For yeah. This, but just oh. for this year, yeah. Yeah, that that was a weird model. It 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 uh, the the uh, the fuel tanks on that one for the first and second stages if i remember correctly just those were not uh injection molded plastic they were plastic sheets that yeah. you wrapped around, yeah, you wrap around the, uh, the stages. and it had it had a pipe that went down the down the side that that hid the rivets that held it all together and mm -hmm. It it worked, but I tell you, when I built it, I had never built a model like that before. <laughs> yeah, the re re release of that kit is the same way. Yeah, With the, the sheet oh. stock. So, yeah. so, so this one's the Enterprise with the with the captains with the um the landing barge, and this one is the same one with the um turbo turbo, turbo. Mm. Nice. So in the right spot. One, right. So, <laughs> So this one, I got two different designs. This is for the, the the Enterprise. Both of these are for the Enterprise refit, and this one is for the TOS. If you, you notice there's a difference, there's a difference. You look at this. It's very white. Yeah. It's, oh, there it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That one's for the TOS. This one's for the refit. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the TOS is another version where it's a transition to the newer version mm -hmm. where you've got this, but you've got the turbo lift in there. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> wow. You've been busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, had uh, asked, uh, would that be all there, uh, Stephen? Can I go on? Yeah, I'm done. You, is, you, is, you, you may have it back. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. <laughs> much, much earlier, I asked everybody over at the uh, live chat, what's on your bench? And... Um, John Polk said a 70 Charger and a 59 Caddy and a 68 Dart. Wow. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, that's what he's doing. Carwin, Carwin's saying it's a secret. He's not going to tell us until he's ready to tell us. Um, so that's John Polk who said like 14 other projects. Uh, Mark Dunmore, the guess. Um, I really, I'm not a good guess, yes. but. He did finally post something on uh, the Facebook community and it's body parts. Uh, so he's, oh, been writing, he's, working on. Yeah, he's been raiding graves lately and he's putting these uh, body parts together. <laughs> hey, uh, Jack, Jack, you know, you know something just as a, a suggestion. Uh, Are you familiar with Twitch? Twitch? Is he the yeah. disc jockey on the uh, Ellen show? No, Twitch, the, the, the online broadcast, the live broadcasting system. No, I don't. All right. We'll, we'll talk privately afterwards. I got to turn you on to that because what you're doing now, you're going to get a far greater audience. Oh, okay. All right. That, that, that hmm. would be good. That would okay. Be good. Uh, we'll talk afterwards. We, that would be good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think Mark would like to have his uh, stuff broadcasted uh, further around the globe. Um, he does good work. I mean, he's this is just the beginning, and uh, I don't know why he's not uh, in a rubber room, but uh, he said that <laughs> I think that he hope almost did anyway. <laughs> what else? I'm, I'm trying to figure out who she is, but uh, yeah, who is she, uh, Mark? So, uh, let's see, John. Oh, didn't get uh, that is didn't have anything. And uh, before I move on to uh, Bob and of course uh, Joe, I just want to push this out here. Uh, you were bringing up uh, fan base stuff like the nacelle, and there's a lot of people doing uh, fan base type of things. And oh, nice! I love this, it. Is, mm -hmm. this is very pretty. This is just uh, pretty. It, it really is. Uh, this was the Smith site. Somebody said this should have been the refit uh, for the movies. So it, it would make more sense if it was this, actually. Uh, the refit as it stands right now, it, I think is some, it's a radical difference. But uh, certainly uh, this is very much. I agree. You know, much. I, totally agree. Mm -hmm. I, like, the, I like the ends of the. Uh, nacelles are just actually quite interesting. And as you see here, even this collar is even uh, echoing the JJ prize. So. Yeah. The only bit I don't like about it, the collar, collar around the, uh, the, the bizarre. The blue? I like that look. What? The blue? No, the, uh, you know, the, co the, the collar that you pointed out around oh, the. Oh, this collar, yeah. you don't like that? Bizarre? Nah. I nah. don't like that. Wow. Okay. Great. But uh, everything else is cool. <laughs> and and uh, Joe McCaslin joined us too, and he said he is working on a Tacoma King Tiger. I think this yep. is it. Nice. I think you're missing the treads there, mister. I guess you are working on it. I think that was a cutaway. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Look, such a cutaway, Joe, that you're making that's missing the treads. Uh, but he does cutaways. Um, he don't. He don't need no stinking treads. <laughs> no, <he doesn't. laughs> no, but his cutaways are all scratch building. It's just amazing what he does too. He's like uh, Mark. I, I think they wear they, they work in rubber room. Um, this is just amazing. This is crazy stuff. I love it. But I, I'm never going to be this caliber, so. Look at this. That would be a fun little 3D modeling project. <laughs> I thought yeah. you would like it. <laughs> yeah. because, because, because all I have to do is make one wheel and then just duplicate it. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Look at how detailed he's gotten. But if you look at the detail, you break it down. It's it's there's all simple cylinder shapes. Yeah. They're yeah. Just simple mm. shape. Now they're just small cylinders, medium sized cylinders, big cylinders. They're all just interplaced. Just to back up a little, uh, Mark's figure is uh, Jeanne d'Arc Altar from Fate Grand Order. Oh, Jean d'Arc, yeah. Jean d'Arc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jace has a lot of uh, research in, in coming up with this stuff. Oh, yeah. This is a lot of references that he used. I love the Zimmer effect on the sides. Oh, look at that. Mm. He's got the motor and everything in there. Engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's diesel, right? Ah, oh, it would be mm -hmm. used. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they, they used it. They either use diesel or gasoline. I think they use diesel. Germans use mostly diesel. Okay. Okay. The Americans that were crazy on the gasoline. Yeah, I know the first Shermans used gasoline, and that was a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, would, so would an electric powered uh, a tank be have a lot more torque? I don't know. I, I just I just know the Sherman had a bad reputation as a as a kind of a piece of junk tank, but the fact is that... The, it was that it was that and that radial motor. Yeah. It would had tends to be to blow up every so often. Yeah. yeah it, it uh, you know, you, you may not you may not have the best tank in the world, but when you throw 5,000 of them at a... Uh, at then a when, target, when, when we built them, we got rid of the radial engine, we put in a Cummings diesel. Yeah. And... Uh, totally relayed it out, put a new suspension system on it compared to what you were using. Made it more of a nicer ride and it could run faster. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then, then us, us Brits put a, put a decent gun in the, uh, the turret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I take the blame for that. <laughs> How you doing, Bob? All right. How are you? I'm, I'm peachy. What do you got going on? <laughs> hey, well, that, that one quick. <laughs> what do I have going on? Uh, snow. Snow, yeah. It was there this morning. You just said on the live chat it's snowing here right now. Yeah. A lot of snow? No, we just got a couple inches, but it's getting so cold that that's the big, Ooh, that's the bigger bit. deal. Yeah. Oh, that is pretty. Oh, the sun did come out, so I got to take nice. some pictures outside. Oh, that Perfect. turned out just yeah, so good. nice. Yeah. Sweet. It really, really ships that camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> so I got, got to actually go out and take some daylight pictures. No, that, that paint scheme's a good match for that design. It really is. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's my favorite one. So, what what war was that used in mostly? Cold War. Cold, Cold War, Cold war. Era, 1950s, 60s, 70s. Okay. Uh, designed for high speed nuclear bomb delivery, yeah. but uh, yeah, it was a Mach two precision bomber. So that's done boxed up, ready for the next show I go to. I started playing with one of the kits I won at a raffle at a show, <laughs> at a show which is this little monogram F-16. Mm. And I just got the paint on it last night. So I gotta get it clear coated and I'll start putting the decals on it probably tomorrow. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Working on that, and I'll be starting my uh, Lamborghini for the uh, modeling community box stock build probably on Tuesday. Uh, with a contest L L five thousand LP five thousand. Sorry. 
So we're doing that for the box stock build, but that's mm -hmm. that's all I got right now because I normally am at work. Uh, I, I bailed out early because of the weather. <laughs> I told them I wanted to be home before dark, and they said, "Oh, no problem." They didn't expect me to come in. Just gonna tell Tony. I'm not seeing it, Tony, but uh, go ahead. I just want to tell Tony that I can't see what he told said on the live chat. Uh, is that uh, the two things you're doing? That's all I got going right now. Oh, really? Are you? Are you like me? You build cars in the summer? <laughs> no. That, that uh, for the that Countach, Lamborghini Countach. Oh, P5000, that's a car. It's winter time. <laughs> no, I only build cars in the summer only because of the rattle campaign and stuff. I don't know why I'm just bringing that no, up. I build them up whenever, whatever comes up next. So I'm doing that for the group build uh, as far as a regular build. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do after this one. Mm -hmm. That's kind of why I started this one. I didn't know what I wanted to do next. <laughs> It was just there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so yeah. I won this one at a raffle in the, at a show. And uh, they got it from Goodwill for 99 cents. Mm -hmm. it's, not the, it's not the world's greatest F16, but at the end of the day, it looks like what it is. So that's, that's what matters. Yeah. It uh, certainly does. And uh, yesterday, uh, I well, had I a discussion. Um, with uh brian on the, on the uh, subject came up in fact i i watched some, most of the movie i didn't get to the end because they didn't publish the end of the movie on youtube uh but there's some really cool scenes in this movie and this will be a i'm, I'm a big i'm a big fan of lighting things i guess you all figured that out probably and uh this this subject came up and to do this and it's really funny. Brian says the grills don't light up like that, but yeah, I know that light up that way in the movie, but it sure as hell looks very sinister. <laughs> but there is. Well, you know what? Uh, it's a neat subject, but uh, the model is solid. It takes some work to open that up. You're breaking up. Yeah. This so is a notoriously difficult model to build. I said on the model. I'm sorry, Brian. What was that? This is uh, Liam's particular nemesis as well, isn't it? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to send it back to me if he's not going to finish it. Because yeah. uh, I like to, uh, th this would be a good diorama uh, build. And in fact, I didn't queue that up. I should have. Uh, let's see. Images. Uh, Christine. Uh, Christine. Movie. Garage. Got the lights going and a bit of dry ice. Uh, yes. Where is it? Um, well, I don't want to do the poop on the uh, dashboard. I just don't think that's. I th this is the one I was thinking of, but uh, there's one with uh, with uh, Christine's lights are on. Uh, but you get you get what I mean. Uh, that one. There it is. This one. This will be a nice diorama, I think. Uh, so, Dave from. I remember the movie. That's when it's like un, un, un mutilating itself. Yes. Well, yes. I, I wouldn't uh, do the mutilated one. I'd have it all set. Um, it's finishing mutilation. But <laughs> but I just like the lighting uh, effect in this. Uh, and I'm just saying that David, or Dave from. Uh, uh, DJ Model Works. Uh, you know who I, he's doing the uh, David Lazenby. Lazenby, yeah. yeah, he's doing the uh, the clock tower in Back to the Future. He's doing a DeLorean right now, which of course looks pretty awesome. And uh, I think this is something he should consider. Really, I don't know, Dave, if you're watching and rerun. I'm a big fan of yours, giving you a bad idea. <laughs> That's one of those kits you see lots of people start, but hardly ever see anybody finish it. Yeah. It's just a notoriously oh. difficult kit to build. Especially when you put all the lighting in it. 
Which is what's a difficult kit to build? The Christine kit. Oh really? Why would that be difficult? Oh, no. oh I see people start it all the time and you never see anybody finish it. Hardly ever. Hmm. I think it's just a difficult kit to build, especially when you try to light it. Well, uh, Tony McCash says poop on the dashboard, not negotiable. Yeah, okay. I'll try it now. Let's see. Tony McCash. If you only had the one green light in the dashboard for the radio, I mean, yeah, we are. Yeah. it would be worth it. There's a conflict on the pitches I've seen uh, yesterday after our talk. Um, there's a couple that show the dash and the radio green, but most of what I've seen shown a bright white in, inside. Ah, uh, here's uh, Tony's build. Oh, his uh, Death Star. His uh, half nice. Death Star. Return of the Jedi one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic work in that. <laughs> That's an AMT kit. Yeah, it's chassis is probably from another kit. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's really going to town with it. Uh, he's going to put the floors in and and fiber optic, and it's going to be lit and all kinds of stuff. The screen mesh is really working out well on that. I like that. Yeah, it is. Mm. Yeah, love he the detail picked, on that thing. He picked a uh, uh, a subject matter now, didn't he? Yeah, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. But, but, okay. So, what's the material used on this? Uh, plastic. It's a plastic globe. Uh, he found uh, not a uh, uh, a map globe. But uh, something to do, uh, something to do with his son had a toy that has a got a globe and he saw it to be a Death Star. Uh, he doesn't have a picture here of the eye. Uh, I thought his eye, the way he did the eye and that this uh, equator here the right. uh, did a really good job. It was a puzzle toy, he says, and he bought a hot knight. Which is basically, basically, it looks like a looks like a uh, soldering iron. Knife. What's that? It looks like a soldering iron. Oh, soldering iron. It's, mm. Okay. Here's one. Uh, oh, yeah, hot knife. So yeah. it's almost like a, a soldering iron when you you oh. the uh, the, the blade on it. Yep, yeah. takes us takes a number eleven blade. Yeah. And he's uh, using a uh, screen uh, to do the uh, the parts. So that's uh, uh, we we were hanging out uh, yesterday, Tony and I. At some point later later in the evening, that was after I was hanging out with Brian, talking about the uh, Christine. <laughs> so, ah, uh, David, how are you doing? You feel a little waterlogged or water sogged or a little damp over there in California? Yeah, we've been getting a lot of rain. <clears throat> so where, where in California are you from? Uh, Sutter Creek, California. It's about an hour west of Sacramento. Or oh, east, okay. I'm sorry, east of Sacramento. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm in San Diego. Oh, okay. You're a little further south. <laughs> yeah, our, our weather's a lot nicer than yours. <laughs> but, you guys, but you guys have been getting some rain too, though. Yes, we have been. As a matter of fact, was it the next next fifteen days? The next eleven days out of fifteen days is going to be wet. Yeah, yeah, pretty much all over the state. Yeah, and the hey, further Jim. north though, it's even wetter. Yeah, let's let's shed a tear for them a little bit there. Yeah. Actually, we're getting more to add to the drama. We had snow too. We've had snow. Oh, for wow. A long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't normally, uh, you know, because we're at 1330 as far as elevation, and it has to get really cold before we get it, but it's been getting pretty chilly. Today's not bad. It's on, it's 54 today. Oh, only 54. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, got, we got another Arctic 
uh, storm coming down towards us right now. So it's supposed to hit yep. like on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yep. I, I see that even though Heath hasn't been around, his spirit has uh, come to us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 I feel so sorry for you. Isn't that right there, Buck? Don't you just feel really yeah, bad? I mean, we had negative 56 today. We do wow. our temperatures. We do our temperatures in Fahrenheit because we're Americans. <laughs> uh, Harwin said, "Oh, Californians talking about rain is like McDonald's talking about salad." <laughs> <laughs> I like the rain. Uh, I wish it rained. <laughs> Every, every, time, every time Buck says minus 56, I keep thinking Celsius and go, wow. <laughs> uh, well, uh, today, well, the past couple of days since, um, well, since the hangout, I, I've shown off my um, Defiant. This is going to work tomorrow, and I'm going to take an extra battery so I can have it sitting on my desk looking all pretty and stuff, and it has little blinkies, too, to make oh, it looks nice. It's so cute. Yeah. The <laughs> weak, weak, <laughs> me fiant is what it's called. <laughs> the weak um, This is actually, I thought this would be very difficult to light, but it turns out it was a piece of cake. Gosh, it was so easy to light. Well, maybe because I, I mean, I do have the experience to do it, but I am re I'm going to redo this. And there are windows that are on the underside here that if I go try to get in close, you'll see they're like black dots. Um, the next one, I'm going to drill them out and use fiber optics to light windows. Um, so, yeah, there's some fiber optics. Well, the blinkies are fiber optics. I think that it, oh, there's another light. Underside light there on the neck. That's a fiber optic uh, shining uh, back onto the ship. Uh, nice. Love uh, it. I try to do the nav lights on the side. There is fiber optics in there. In fact, there, you can probably see the. Right. Yeah, I can see them. Uh, but they didn't work out. Um, so I they didn't work out because I used Tester's model glue to put it together. Fiber <laughs> So I gotta I gotta figure out a different way of putting the two sides together. Maybe you'd probably even do it with a boxy. Uh, but so I got uh, I'm kind of working up uh, my next build, and I uh, I had an open Excelsior, the original pop, and uh, I started uh, figuring some things out because I was talking to Tony about this too while I was building this Death Star. And he told me to watch Lou Dalmeso's uh, videos on the Repop Excelsior. Uh, basically, Lou's a phenomenal painter. I mean, he paints, his paint is like amazing stuff. Uh, he didn't light it, but Tony did. Uh, I think uh, I did download Tony's videos. Bring them up. Uh, let's see, it's in my, uh, go back. I can't, it's a file called uh, Reference, Tony McCash. <laughs> so here, y'all with me still? Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I, I thought it was me screeching. Here's the Excelsior. <laughs> uh, that he did and uh this this is this is fascinating here uh, shuttle bay or whatever you want to call it wow <clears throat> and he's telling me about well when you see the other side of it the inside of it there's really no room but he put there's no room to actually have this but he did get it in there Oh, yeah, I love that. That looks yeah. nice. That looks nice. <laughs> so I'm uh, kind of working through the build myself uh, using the original pop to do it. It looks, it looks real good. Yeah, it's really nice. I never liked the neck of that ship. 
Uh, it grows on me. It grew on me. Kind of looks like a, a turtle neck, huh? Yeah. yeah it's right. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they could have made it more aerodynamic, make, make it look, look a lot sleeker. Yeah. It looks, looks a lot more sturdy, though, than the, the Enterprise. Yeah. 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 The neck. Brian? Brian? Brian, I got to meet you. So that's Brian. I think it's wrong, Brian, but I had to mute you because of screeching going on from your transmission. So, you. Brian? Brian? Did, did, okay. did, he, did he just give you the middle finger? <laughs> he probably did but anyway uh this is that uh metal uh, bay or cargo bay or whatever it was and i asked him i said where'd you get these was it part of the model that these he said no he he uh had it from some other part like a rocket ship or something we talked about that because here's the interior uh this these rectangles are just masked off to produce this. It's bleed through the plastic. Mm. And I'm like, boy, that's pretty clever. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he laid that uh, barrel pipe thing over on top of it. But what you see here is a problem. The windows are right next to this. And he said it was difficult light blocking it to the point where the blue does not bleed into the windows. Right. So really this this build i can get a side view of it yeah this build i'll zoom in uh let's see this is where that shuttle bay is these are the windows right are right next to that barrel thing wow so yeah this is this is a very challenging build and i'm not so sure this would be a suitable second build because I, I, I said to everybody uh, yesterday, whoever wants to learn how to do a little bit of lighting, a little bit of fiber optic, uh, the Defiant is an, an excellent, excellent, excellent kit. That little tiny model is excellent. There's so much room in there to work with. And I thought, well, I think what the Excelsior would be a good second, but looking at closer inspection, it really isn't. <laughs> uh, uh, better. It's actually very difficult. Jack? Yeah? I apologize for interrupting, but it's 8.30 and I have to go, so I will see everyone later. All right, bye. Hey, hey Jay. Bye. Nice to see Jay. All right, bye. Later. Bye. Someday, maybe. <laughs> bye. Take bye. care. Uh, so here, um, with that old kit, I uh, used, they, they have that god-awful ridge on the edge that is supposed to be smooth and repop it smooth. Uh, but the ridge is actually helping me keep the windows straight. Yeah, in line. Straight. Yep. Excuse me. Yeah. And he also proposed a different, another problem too, is that the bottom, these four holes on the bottom run into the underside of the saucer. The underside of the saucer fits into this ridge. Mm. Uh, effectively covering what you see here. Mm. And it turns out I had to notch the inside of the bottom. And I'm actually thinking of using fiber optics for this too, but they've got these elongated windows too, which I don't think I can imitate. <clears throat> I, I don't know. You I think could, uh, well to do. You could do. You could do fiber optics for those four lower windows but light, light them with ambient light instead of directly lighting them? Well, that's an idea. That's, that's actually pretty good. Uh, and this is what it looks like, uh, just to, to get a, an idea of what the light coming through might look like. Wow. Yeah. So I got to do that four more times on the edge, on the rim of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I will complete it, uh, but I think I am going to use this as a... Uh, test pilot uh, to do it, but certainly um, there's a lot of drilling involved in this. So that's my story, and I'm second to it. 
Uh, so how have you been, Dave? Uh, <clears throat> I've been uh, busy, doing okay. Um, I just want to show you. Um, I've been I've been working on my locomotive, um, and I'm almost ready to put the the, the body collar, the silver down on it. But um, what I did in the meantime though is planning ahead. I got me a nice supply of just red and black shrink wrap. Mm -hmm. How much you think I paid for that? Just, just anybody's guess. Uh, How much? Twenty. Three. Close. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. <laughs> Including shipping. Uh, if we so. were on the prices right, uh, you'd be hugging. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? So yeah, but I wouldn't pay the taxes on the prices. So in California, two oh, fifty. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> California, then, uh, remember? And then the other other thing I got, um, <clears throat> you know, like you use the uh, phone jack connectors. I just use. Um, I, I ordered them, but I don't have them yet. I use the servo leads, you know, like on RC cars and planes. I use that for my wiring and I can, you know, cut and splice and make them big or short as I want. But I got these, um, they're 1.8 millimeter uh, LEDs. Mm. They're, they're pre-wired. They're already pre-resistored. Wow. They, 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 uh, operating, vol uh, operating voltage is 9 to 12 volts. But these things fire at six volts. I'm telling you, like these things are, are freaking bright. So, wow. <laughs> mm. so I needed something small because I needed to go inside behind it to go into the casting, and uh, then I'll just uh, like on some of the marker lights, I'll just tint them, you know, like the red and green um, on them. But yeah, and I think I paid um, for all these. I think I paid like eight bucks for and shipping. So. So that's what I've been doing. Just waiting to get the rest of my my electronic stuff, and then. Uh, but uh, I uh, that's kind of the last thing that goes in. I'm just kind of getting all this stuff ready. But so anywho, um, so that's that's what I'm doing. But I just been working a lot. I just haven't had a chance to do all the stuff I like to do. Oh well, sure, that's always the uh, that's always the tragedy. <laughs> Isn't it though? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I, I made the proposal to my other half about uh, doing videos because a lot, I, I mean, I can set up a camera, do what I need to do. In fact, I even started for the uh, Define making a script of sorts to do the next build and, and just follow through with it and do like these episodal things on specific things in the build. But then comes editing. The answer I got. The answer I got was, you do such a fine job, Jack. <laughs> but I guess I couldn't twist anybody's arm to help me out. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. It's just something that I got to figure <coughs> out. Ah, uh, is that is that it, uh, there, Dave? Uh, yeah. Well, I can uh, I can I can show you uh, my locomotive. locomotive. It's 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 already to paint. But let me go grab it here. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Get your locomotive. Da na 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 and then uh and your bicep yeah. grew holding it up like that too what's that your biceps grew holding it up that way <laughs> it's, it's, heavy. With the locomotive. <laughs> it's heavy? about uh it's pushing about four pounds here so there you go it's heavy but you see all those little casting that's the lights are going to go on behind there mm. yeah. and I then like the that. number boards go on and they'll be uh backlit with those also so I'm just Figure how many I need to use. I've got uh, 20 of them, so I got plenty. So that's not a problem. So. But anyway, so yeah, that's that's where we're at on that. But next time you see it, it'll be all silvery looking. So. <laughs>
Okay. What uh, road name are you going to put on it? What's that? What, where, what road name are you putting on it? It's going to be uh, Western Pacific. The Feather River will have like the little feather on the. Oh, the, the orange and logo. silver paint scheme? Uh, silver and orange. Oh. Yeah. Although on a couple of them, they did do black and orange too, but uh, under pressure from the railroad people that I work with, uh, I'm, I'm forced to do it silver and orange. So, yeah. <laughs> George uh, on the live uh, live chat said, uh, awesome build there. Uh, your lo That locomotive looks great, Dave. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Taking a long time. <laughs> yeah, it, it has. I think. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> two, I don't even remember how long. Two, two years and counting, right? Yeah. I was thinking two years, but I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, kind of off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. It's all brass, uh, to uh, George. Uh, I'm sure you know that if you followed us. I think he's been following us for a couple of years already. Uh, there's, you know, scale modelers just don't do uh, scale modeling. They do other things too. And I just want to give a little plug here for our friend Carwin uh, on his uh, YouTube channel, Carwin's TV. He does uh, a discussion with Doc about Doctor Who. So if you're into Doctor Who and talking about the drama that's going on over there, tune in to Carwin TV. And I do believe Carwin, you do other things besides uh doctor who too you probably uh even do some movie reviews and stuff uh you're big on that stuff uh, i used to be but certainly uh us modelers do other things like carwin does so anyway um brian is that is that what we say here in pittsburgh is that it for pit <laughs> we got brian brian oh brian sorry I can't get you. Yeah. You're not coming in. I'm clicking on your image, and you're not coming in. Ryan? It's a little yeah. cold there, too. It's frozen. Ryan? Hola, Brian. <laughs> Is he alive? <laughs> He's alive. He's <laughs> He doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we uh, spent an hour and 40 minutes uh, talking and fun time. And my usual suspects, as usual, hell, 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 had helped me uh, to kill that time. So if I'm arrested. You talk too much? Well, yeah. <laughs> so they. You know what? I actually noticed something. I wear the same T-shirt on the across the pond as I'm wearing now. <laughs> I haven't changed. I haven't showered. I'm a mess. I haven't shaved. Anyway, I've been busy drilling holes. That many holes. <laughs> um, okay, that will be it for uh, two weeks uh, again across the pond and uh, the uh, Sunday hangout. Uh, we're trying to get some more special guests in. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to track their attention. In fact, I think Liam is trying to catch the attention of Revel of uh, uh, Germany. Revel of Germany. Uh, so we'll good see luck. if he can come through with that. Yeah, good luck. That would be interesting. But you know what? Hey, it's promoting their stuff. It's promoting their stuff. It's free. It's free. I've got to spend an hour with us, and it's, it could be invaluable. Who knows? Uh, but we're going to try to get more guests in, and I'm, I'm going to See, uh, we, we talk uh, on a regular basis. What happened here? We talk a regular basis with uh, Jay, who does a lot of things professional. He has a uh, shop, and he is professional. He does really good work. I'd like to get some professionals in there, if there's any professional professionals. You know, somebody who actually has sold something that they built. Uh, <laughs> we'd, like, we'd like to uh, talk to you. You sold something already, Buck, didn't you? No. Oh. Oh, he's no. a for relatives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna get we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. We're again. not gonna get rich on relatives, huh? No, no. No. But, uh, uh, so. I keep working at it. I'll keep plugging away. You know, by the time I uh, get buried six feet under, then my stuff will be like Picasso's. It'll be worth a lot more. <laughs> Just don't chop your ear off. That's that'll be okay. Just don't chop yeah. your ear off. 
so uh, we're going to have, uh, I know we're going to have Jamie put in from uh, to again uh, before Wonderfest. Wonderfest is got uh, a couple, uh, three months away. Isn't that right, Stephen? You're going yeah, there. I will, I will be there. Excellent. Excellent. I know uh, Bob is going to make a stop by too uh, at yep. Wonderfest. So uh, it'll be good to see y'all there and uh, meet more people. I y'all. What am I, Mississippi? Uh, I drink stuff from Mississippi. Not Mississippi, Tennessee. Never mind. Um, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And uh, happy modeling, everyone. And be well. Take All care. Right. Bye. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.